If Madame Cove is impossibly busy, try this for size. You might even have the place to yourself. It is a location more widely known in geological circles, but you get the occasional school party undertaking a field study lesson, and you appreciate why. This spectacle can be appreciated by anyone, but not perhaps immediately understood. Some walking on rough limestone is necessary and uphill. Parking near the site is limited and not recommended, unless someone can drop you off. Park in Alstwick village and then walk up Crummock Lane to Thwaite Lane crossing and take the footpath that heads across meadows towards Napa Scar, your first glimpse of impressive limestone scenery that is such a feature. You can also access the site from further up Crummock Lane and over Napa Scar, but this route, yes, this route is much more exposed. Both routes are marked on Ordnance Survey maps. As height is gained, the retrospect views are breathtaking. The panorama looks south into Lancashire, the forest of Boland prominent with Pendle Hill in the far distance. This is a view as glorious as any in the country, and when it is accompanied with the right weather, it is magic, and the patterns created by dry stone walls are a marvel. Photographically, the walls look best rendered as silhouettes, therefore I spot meter the fields as they are much brighter. As a result, the walls become underexposed with very little detail, but I can still use Lightroom in post-production to fine-tune the amount of detail in the silhouetted walls, provided, of course, I save first to RAW. The limestone paving scattered over the hillside is only a hint at what will soon follow. The casual visitor might think that someone has been busy with a JCB, but this wonder is natural. Known as erratic boulders, they were moved by natural forces during the Ice Age to their current position and abandoned by the retreating glacier that used to fill Crummockdale. The source of the boulders is thought to be half a mile up the valley, but the limestone which became their new home is softer and over time has worn away by wind, rain and weathering, leaving them pre carelessly perched on tiny plinths. Eventually, they are likely to topple. Whilst there are many ways on how they are photographed, some perhaps from rather precarious positions, my own instinct is to have that glorious scenery in the background, and not just to the south, as mentioned earlier, but also the hills to the north. Therefore, I increase depth of field using a wide angle lens and a small aperture. Depending on how close the photographer is to the stones, it might be a good idea to detach autofocus and manually focus in at around 50 feet so that everything that should be sharp is sharp. 
This is easier to achieve with Micro Four Thirds than many other larger formats. The way back to the village of Austwick, well, that is best perhaps the way you came.